Thank you, sir, for sharing the glorious achievement of the year. It is my honor to introduce our esteemed chief guest, Sri Umesh Ashok Kadamji. Professor Umesh Ashok Kadam is Member Secretary, Indian Council of Historical Research, ICHR. An eminent social scientist in the discipline of history, Sir specializes in socio-economic and cultural history of the Deccan, trade and commerce in the 17th and 18th century Konkan coast, Bhakti movement from the 10th to 17th century, maritime history of Western India, urbanization in the medieval Maratha region, history of the Marathas and European powers, and has a track record of advancing social, economic, and cultural development in various capacities. He is deeply committed to promote research on Indian history with a multidisciplinary and holistic approach in tune with National Education Policy 2020. Professor Kadam held the position of Professor Chair Medieval Indian History at the Center of Historical Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, before his appointment as Member Secretary, ICHR. He has been teaching and conducting research for more than 24 years. He has authored 46 books, published 30 research papers, completed three major research projects, 10 book chapters and two monographs. He has guided more than 26 MPhil and 24 PhD scholars. He is a recipient of various awards and fellowships for his outstanding contribution in the field of history. Of his many achievements, Professor Kadam is best known for introducing and developing young talent to conduct research and in medieval Indian history. He has led large change programs, worked to further equality, diversity, and inclusion, and is a strong proponent of driving the digital and online learning agenda. I request Sri Umesh Ashok Kadamji to deliver the convocation address. Good evening, everyone. Eminent scholars on the dais and distinguished scholars of the dais. It's a worthy moment to cherish that nearly 927 students of this university are receiving their degrees today. My dear friends, I will be speaking here for next 15 minutes, so kindly bear with me. You can clap after 15 minutes. Mere Priya Mitro, Let me tell you something that I was not as privileged as you are to get such kind of an education. When I was doing my BA degree and master's degree, I had to toil day and night in my farm. Mere ghar mein teen bhaisya aur do gaayen thi jinki mujhe seva karni padti thi aur uske baad mujhe padhai likhne ke liye mauka milta tha and if you have the will the iron will you can make wonders for yourself today you sitting over here i know that each one of you carry the idea of bharat as a vishwa guru and for that you need to introspect 
introspect in the sense to understand the idea of bharata the whole idea of jambudvipa every text ancient classical text mentions the word the geographical term in a cultural expression jambudvipe bharata varshe now my dear friends after getting our degrees there are many more over here who will not be able to tell us what is the meaning of jambu dvipa what is jambu jambu is a fruit water apple okay and this water apple was grown on this territory within this indian subcontinent far away till the malaya archipelago and hence it was known as an expression that this is jambu dvipa the second expression for this indian subcontinent was bharatvarsh and slowly we see that within these ages our expressions have changed the idea of education has changed today we speak of indian knowledge systems without trying to understand how have these indian knowledge systems been emancipated and how do we try to understand them within a larger spectrum if we are going to calculate in understanding the indian knowledge system within the so called framework of your modernity which you say that modernity came only with the europeans to this country then my dear friends let us intros introspect and understand that that is not modernity there is the europeans thought that is modernity for them because it is only the europeans at that stage came to know what actually humanity is as the great gandhi says politics without humanity of no use worship without sacrifice of no use in the same sense we have to understand that modernity as a concept was far more within the realms of the classical world of india within the realms of the medieval world of india adunikta ka prayas paschimatyo ne unke 17th 18th 19th century mein kiya but this was not the case so and without understanding this adunikta which goes very close to humanism because humanism is something again we are been told about because the colonial world came with a perception that they are going to civilize us it's a white man burden and even against this white man white man's burden we have seen that they gave us the first three universities in 1857 1857 was a year of the first war of independence but did vivekananda did the great vd savarkar thought of these things in these terms didn't they challenge that there was certain kind of a modernity and humanity existing within our own structures how is it that we take this perception of knowledge forward with european understanding all our libraries all our archives are full of such kind of a knowledge which was been picked up and given us given to us they picked it up and given it to us because they believed in the idea of not prescribing but proscribing they proscribed everything every literature within the indian context all indian vernacular language knowledge dissemination's were been proscribed they were been kept aside and today we hardly know about our indian knowledge systems which are there throughout the various kinds of languages which were been spoken in the classical world and within the medieval world now they touched each and every discipline they touched the discipline of economics science technology philosophy metallurgy numismatics trade commerce astronomy astrology astrophysics each and everything was been touched then why do we say that these knowledge practices came to us only with the colonial world 
the colonial world was far more you know influenced and confluenced by the indian knowledge systems in the classical world as well as in the medieval world because if you see the history of deccan i will just say that just see the history of deccan within the 8th century to the 14th century the history which has been given to us which exclusively talks that medieval indian history is nothing but the history of the sultans and the history of the moguls then my dear friends we are really really wrong because until and unless you understand your own history you will not be able to understand the concept of bharata you will not be able to understand what are the knowledge systems and how these knowledge systems have to be corroborated into the new education policy the new education policy itself talks about such kind of orientations and orientations of not creating segmented biases prejudices by categorization the european knowledge systems came with an idea of segmentation of categorization and they made us to classify each and every knowledge the indian knowledge systems never tried to classify anything they tried to understand it in a very very holistic kind of an perspective and the holistic perspective which falls within the realm of religion spiritualism and science and technology and philosophy all bind it together creates the best human beings within the world it is if you see with the 12th century the great saint like gyaneshwar the great saint like gyaneshwar in the 12th century he is translating the bhagavad gita of sanskrit into maharashtri prakrit and within that he is trying to give us the bhava artha okay so this is a critique on bhagavad gita and the name of this book work is bhavarth deepika the colonial world gave us artha but indians are interested in understanding the bhavarth the emotion as well as the meaning is far more important than understanding only the crux the rubric crux of it that will not become holistic the new education policy the foundations within it itself defy the whole understanding of the colonial world that is 10 plus 2 plus 3 and it tries to say that all knowledge has to be disseminated into a multidisciplinary world cross disciplinary interdisciplinary an engineering student trying to understand humanities social sciences arts and a management student trying to understand what falls within the realms of medical sciences so trying to you know see if you even see these renaissance people renaissance men they are diverse in their understanding take an example of these renaissance men even in uh, the florentine kind of an person you'll say that leonardo da vinci practiced sculpture he practiced painting he practiced anatomy i can give you a dozen of examples of all these things which were been done in our classical ancient world there were so many rishis who did the same they practiced poetry artistry sculpture anatomy astrology physics and they were really really diversified and we are today standing on these knowledge systems these are which are known as indian knowledge systems what is it that we need to do now when you pass out from here when you go into the into the world the world expects something from you and it is very very clearly said by the great vivekananda my dear young friends he says stand on your feet tall he says take all the responsibility of the society on your soul shoulders and become the pillars of the society this is what is the great vivekananda is telling you we should follow the advices of the great vivekananda because he tells us that what our religions indian religions have given to the world what indian spiritualism has given to the world what indian knowledge systems has given to the world but if you want to create these indian knowledge systems you need to revisit all the languages you should revisit and you have to orient yourself into various knowledge various languages indian languages 
and under ICHR, we are trying to do this by creating a digital library for vernacular sources on Indian history and culture, where we are trying to target all such private institutes which have everything in Pandulipis. And we will try to bring it at one place where people will be able to understand the gravity of the situation, the seriousness of that situation, and then and then only you will be able to understand that whatever people have been saying till date that there are so many examples, there are so many different kinds of knowledge systems imbibed within the Indian culture, they can be open to the world only with this kind of an literature. This literature which was being proscribed by the Europeans needs to be brought forth within the realm and try to understand what we can do for the betterment of the world. That what I said that Yaneshwar in his Pasaidan, a poem which he wrote and the Pasaidan says that Vishwasva Dharme Surya Paho Joje Khalanchi Vyankati Sando Taya Satkarmi Labo Vishwasva Surme Surya Dharme Paho So it is in the 12th century that saints of India, Bhakti saints of India were talking about global citizenship, they were talking about the wellness of the world and even today, in the last two, three years, when we were facing Corona, when the world was dying, India was able to manage itself because the resources within the common man were so very particular with this holistic approach of looking towards the society and understanding the community behavior that we could surpass that. And it is exactly these things should be implemented into our knowledge systems. So my dear friends, today I would like to tell you that please don't find yourself as different as the colors which you are wearing. That I am a, a student of engineering, I am a student of management, I am a student of medical sciences or I am a student of this so and so forth discipline. We all need to work together in collective programs for the collective development of our society. Now, today you become the property of the society. By getting this degree, you have now taken the oath to serve the society. Serve the society in utter simplicity. And the best example, modern example of simplicity I will give you, if you want to understand simplicity, look towards Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, a great man with a with such kind of an simplicity, with such kind of an humanity, humanitarian approach, that you should try to find such kind of icons within yourself. Today, in India, when we see how India will be going forth and how India becomes the Vishwaguru and a global leader, we are so fortunate that we have a great Prime Minister like Modi ji. Earlier, in the last three to four decades, when I was a young student, I had hardly any political ideals like Modi ji in front of me that who will see the world as world looking towards India. It is not that India should look towards the world. It is not that we should look towards the West. It is now the world should look towards us through all such kind of educational practices that we are having today in India. I really, really am thankful to the organizers and the Vice Chancellor of this university, Indus University, for giving me an opportunity to be amongst you. This is real, a, a huge honor to me, a privilege to be amongst you. I thank you all with all my heart, from the bottom of my heart, and I rest my speech over. Thank you very much for patiently hearing me. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing your wisdom and insights from your vast experience. It is my privilege to thank our honorable chief guest, Sri Umesh Ashok Kadamji, for his presence today and also for inspiring our students at the seventh convocation of Indus University. I request honorable chairman, Dr. Nagesh Bhandari ji, and chairperson, Dr. Ritu Bhandari, to felicitate our chief guest, Sri Umesh Ashok Kadamji, with a memento and shawl.
Thank you, ma'am and sir.